Okay. All right, this is section 3-1, which is a discussion of... Okay, we can put our feet down. <laughs> I was just showing my socks. Okay, good. All right. Section 3, one, which is a discussion of roles and mean value theorems, right? We're starting with mean value theorem because that's the main umbrella under which roles falls. And so here's the theorem itself. So mean value theorem says, if a function is continuous on a closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. So, um... Continuous on the, you can't be uh, differentiable at an endpoint. So it's going to be continuous on the closed, differentiable on the open. Then there must be at least one value c in the open interval such that the derivative at that point equals this little thing right here, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now, f of b minus f of a over b minus a might look a little familiar. Average. It is. That's exactly right. This is an average rate of change. Or in other words, this is slope of the secant. Slope of the secant line that connects the endpoints. So if you had a function and you connected the endpoints with a line, and you found the slope of that line, that would be the slope of the secant. In other words, the average rate of change of that function. F prime of C is slope of the what? The derivative is slope of the... And the point. If this is slope of the <coughs> secant, tangent. derivative is slope of the tangent, line tangent, at that Same one value, right? right? So here's what the mean value theorem says in a nutshell. Suppose I drive to school and my average velocity is 30 miles an hour. Right? right? Does that mean I drove 30 miles an hour from the moment I pulled out of my driveway until I pulled into my parking spot? No, you definitely right. speeded a lot. No, it's, it's pretty tough to drive at a constant velocity on city streets, right? Cruise control. Uh, uh, ran yes, because we all use cruise control in Alpharetta, I right? Do. Yes. I okay. Don't. All right. So anyway, um, yeah, so my average velocity is 30, but here's the question. In order for my average velocity to be 30, is there at least one point where my instantaneous velocity had to be 30? Yes. Somewhere in that time frame. Yeah. Did I have to be driving at 30 no. somewhere no. in there? No. Yes. It could be like 31 well, and 29. It's it says it right there. Can I in a car go from 29 to 31 and not pass yes. through 30? No. You no. no. have to pass that. Oh, yeah. It's not like you match me so. Right, you can't jump over velocities when you're in a car. It's a continuous thing, right? So say, um, I don't have any room, I wrote all over everything, but I'm going to do this real small right here. So say this is my position function, going to school, right? So I drove like really fast, and then I slowed down, I stopped for a minute, then I drove fast again, then I had to slow down, and then I eventually like pulled into the parking spot. Okay, so say I got that. There's the slope of the secant, right? Change in position over change in time, so that would be... Um, technically 30 miles over one hour, although it wasn't 30 miles and it wasn't one hour, but it averages to 30 miles per hour. So say that's the slope of the secant. Somewhere inside of here, there has to be at least one spot, and there could be two. There could be four. Where the slope of the tangent has to equal the slope of the secant. Where the instantaneous rate of change has to equal so the average rate of change. Parallel. This is only for functions that have to be both continuous and smooth, differentiable, all the way, right? So as long as they're continuous and differentiable, there has to be at least one spot where the instantaneous rate of change equals the average rate of change on the interval. Does that make sense? So in order to do these problems, I've written out some steps. All right, first step is to check that the function is continuous. How do you know a function is continuous? For your purposes, if there's no denominator and there's no roots, it's continuous, right? As soon as you're dividing by zero, you're discontinuous. No denominator, no It's just like finding domain. Right? Is that, is that okay? Yes, no, I can't tell. What did you say, sir? Like okay. Finding domain. If, you're, if I ask you, is this function continuous? Say I say f of x is x squared minus 5. Is this continuous? Yeah. yeah, because there's no denominators and there's no roots, right? If I added 
put an x minus 1 on the bottom, this function would then be discontinuous at 1. one. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, that's as hard as it gets. So all you have to do is check and make sure your function is continuous on the closed interval. Then you find the derivative and make sure the function is differentiable. How do you know if it's differentiable? If there's ever any place where the derivative has a root or a denominator, right? It's just like continuous except on the derivative. Okay? Okay. All, All right. right, so you just make, you check, check. So two checks. There are two conditions that have to be met for MVT to apply. The next thing you do is you find SOS. What do you think SOS stands for? Sally out Slope of secant. Slope of secant. Very good. Okay, SOS stands for slope of the secant. F of B minus F of A over B minus A. It's, it's just, just slope, right? Okay, Cheater. you set your derivative equal to that, whatever number you get there, and you solve it. <coughs> C plus U has to be in the interval from A to B. All right? C has to be in that open interval. Rolle's theorem. We're going to do both theorems, and then we're going to do examples. Okay, Rolle's theorem is actually just a specific case of mean value. Rolls that says that the function has to be continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open, and the endpoints have to be the same. Same y values. If those three things are true, then there has to be at least one place where the derivative is zero. Well, here's what they're saying. They're saying if you have a function where the y values are the same at the endpoints, that's continuous and differentiable. First of all, if it's continuous and differentiable, that means MVT applies, right? So that there has to be at least one place where the slope of the secant equals the slope of the tangent. So for any problem where the y values are the same, what's the slope of the secant going to be? Zero. Zero. So he's just saying, oh, look, if the y values are the same, there has to be at least one place where the slope of the tangent is zero, right? So he's just using mean value theorem for a specific case where the y values are the same and the slope is zero. Alright, so then there has to be at least one place in the open interval where the slope is zero. That's rolls. So rolls, you have to check three things. You check continuous, you check differentiable, you check that the y values are the same. Alright, so just steps for rolls. It is a theorem, it, not a theory. Don't confuse theory with theorem. Theorem means it has been proven. Yes, in math, theorems have been proven. Cool. He shouldn't even get his own if he's just like using the same thing. Yeah, I know. He really shouldn't get his own name on it, should he? We should find him and beat him up. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned mean value theorem. Anyway, and you are allowed to just use mean value theorem, but your book is going to specifically say rules, and it's, it's good. All right, so here's your steps. Number one, you check it's continuous. Number two, you find the derivative and check that it's differentiable. Number three, you have to check that the endpoints are the same. Check, check, check. So there's more things to check, but then once you've checked them and determined that rolls applies, then it's easy to do. You just set the derivative equal to zero and solve. Notice that C has to be in the open interval. C cannot be at an endpoint for either one of these. Okay, we're just talking the open interval. All right, so you ready to try some? No. No? That's the enthusiasm I love. It is too early. Too early, it's like 11 15. I don't wake up till exactly. 12. The Patriots game was on too late last night. Alright. It seems already took me out of it. Just kind of ruined my bite of cheese. Yeah, First no, example. Two bites of cheese. It kind of ruined my mood. Not gonna lie. I was so happy after my chicken and then the cheese. Alright. Yeah. Determine if MVT applies to f of x equals 2x cubed plus x plus 4 on the interval negative 2 to 1. If so, find c. What's the first?
first step? Should I keep it continuous? Awesome. All right. Is f of x continuous? Yes. Yeah. You have to write that you checked it. So the first thing you would be writing on your paper is f of x is continuous on negative 2, 1. Check. And they don't need to give an explanation why. No explanation necessary. So it wouldn't be continuous if there was like a vertical class in if there was a vertical asymptote inside of that interval, yes, that would be correct. It would not, yes, it would not be continuous. Okay. So, oh, you're looking for vertical asymptotes or holes? You're looking for any break. Yeah, vertical asymptotes the most common. There might be a hole. Something like that. All right, so what's the next step? Find check f prime of x. Find f prime of x and check for differential. So everyone find f prime. Prime. 6x squared plus 1. 6x squared plus 1. So, is f of x differentiable? Yes. 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 Just a uh, little tidbit. All polynomials are always continuous and differentiable. Check. Make sure you write the intervals, please, so you get in the habit. Closed interval for continuous, open interval for differential. Those, that's all that's required for MVT. Continuous, differentiable, check, check. Therefore, I'm going to write, therefore, MBT applies to apply it. What's the first thing we have to find? There's slope of the secant. Slope of secant, right? right. So, slope of secant. That would be f of one minus f of negative two over 1 minus negative 2. Change in y over change in x. Everyone take a second and find slope of secant. All right. Challenge You can talk to each other, too. It's okay. Hang on. I don't like my table. <laughs> it's table. Be very sure about your arithmetic. So otherwise it makes the next step more difficult. Be very careful about your positives and your negatives. Alright, what's f of 1? 7. What's f of 2? Negative 14. Negative 14 over 1 minus negative 2, which is 3. So we get 21 thirds or 7. Be so careful with your arithmetic. When you do the next part, which is setting the derivative equal to 7, right? You set the derivative equal to the slope of the secant. When you solve this, and you can solve it, there's a couple ways you can solve this, right? Um, if it doesn't work out nicely, chances are you've made a mistake in your arithmetic, at least on quizzes and tests. I can't guarantee for the book. The book doesn't make things always work out nice, right? But on quizzes and tests, it should work out decently. So anyway, um, just be careful that if you, if you get an equation that doesn't seem to factor or work out right, Go back and check this, right? Because there's you probably just dropped a negative somewhere. Right. All right. Hey, if x squared is one, what's x? Plus or minus one. Plus or minus one. So what is c for this problem? Just negative one. Why is it only negative one? The interval. Not open. Because it has to be inside the open interval. It can't be at an endpoint. Inside the open interval. Okay. All right. Star that. Yes. Just have a. What does it matter? You're never gonna look back at your notes. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> All right. I will We're gonna do the long same long. thing for rolls. Anybody wanna try my cheese? I do. I do. Yeah. I got it. 
Keeping the functions easy. They won't always the be easy, one. though. The bottom one? Yeah. What's the difference? They're two different types of cheese. This one looks like peanut butter. Yeah, it's not. I don't like peanut butter. My mom wouldn't pack me peanut butter. This one's good. Cool. <laughs> you like that? Oh, goodness. All right. Maybe it's just so, me. everyone take a minute. See if you can do rolls start to finish. Follow your steps. Check that the function is continuous. Check that it's differentiable. Check that the endpoints have the same y values. Find the derivative, set equal to zero, and solve. See if you can do this start to finish. Although we have no time. Oh yeah, you got three more minutes. I'm a very slow writer. I'm going to wander around the groups and give help and guidance as they Just to make sure that we finish before the bell rings with the recording. Do you guys even finish copying down the problem? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is function continuous? Yes. Yes. Then write that down. f of x is continuous on the closed interval 1 to 2. Check. What's the derivative? 2x two minus 3. 2x minus 3. Is the derivative continuous? That means that the function is differentiable on the open interval 1 to 2. Check. f of 1 is negative 2. f of 2 is negative 2. Therefore, f of 1 equals f of 2. Check. Check, check, check. Three checks means rolls applies. We're so good at this. To apply it, all you have to do is set the derivative equal to what? Zero. X happens to be three halves, which is also our C. Thank goodness it's in the interval, so we are good. Anybody Does that else make sense? Some now, not every problem in your homework tonight will have a theorem applied. They like to throw ones at you.